Okay, hello everyone. It's a bit weird, isn't it? It's a bit um, strange being locked into a courtroom with a load of people and a load of booths, but anyway. Um, so, yeah, um, it's not really structured, but anyway. So we've got three wines at the table. Um, I've got 15 minutes, so I will back to reasonably quickly, but I've got two people. Hopefully there'll be time for a question or two, maybe, to save my boring old mom life. Um, so, the Rome Valley, I don't know how much you guys know about it, I'm going to assume not much, just because that's the easiest way of doing it. Um, it runs north to south, obviously it's in France, just to clear that bit up in case um, so, someone uh, earlier on was getting the Rome and the Rhine mixed up, which I suppose is just one vowel, isn't it? Um, and there are two very distinct regions within it, um, which we classify as the Northern Rome and the Southern Rome. And the Northern Rome is um, smaller, it's got, it actually only accounts for about 5 or 6 percent of the production of the whole area. Um, it's about 40 miles north of south, and the grape variety that is most well known there, and but nearly, pretty much entirely com comprises the red wines in that area, is Syrah which you might also know as Shiraz in Australia <coughs> and in other parts of the world. Um, Southern Rome is broader, it's a uh, wider valley, like most rivers, it starts in a narrower valley, super size, and then flattens out into a bigger plain. Um, and the grape varieties there are a bit more complicated, but by and large, it's dominated by Grenache. So there's quite a big difference in the two areas. And we've got one wine from the north and two wines from the south tonight. Um, the other difference is climactic as well. So the northern Rome is further from the sea, um, has a continental climate, so hot summers, cooler springs, autumns and winters. The southern Rome has a Mediterranean climate, so it's hotter, it's very dry in the summer generally, but you get um, rain in the winter in the fresh vines. And all year round, probably about I don't know, something like 200 days a year, maybe more than that, there's a wind that you might have heard of called the Mistral that blows north to south. Um, and I always forget that this, what this word is, and I've forgotten it again tonight, um, but there is a word for um, madness in this region. Uh, it's a French word, I can't remember what it is, um, and it specifically refers to people being driven mad by this wind because it blows constantly, day after day after day, and it can get up to sort of 60 miles an hour. But one of the advantages that it has for this region as a whole is it allows the growers to work pretty much organically. Because one of the biggest problems that we get with grapes, because grapes are, um, the way that they cluster, they're tightly packed, is if any moisture gets into the bunches and it's warm, you can very, very easily get rot and mould and all sorts of fungi. If you've got a nice dry wind blowing the whole time, then it dries them out really well and it makes it a lot easier. So a lot of growers in that area use organic techniques. Um, not that many of them are certified organic because there's a whole lot of paperwork you've got to go through and it's a bit of a pain in the ass. And to be honest with you, they're more interested in growing the best grapes they can rather than sort of ticking certain boxes. So, uh, without further ado, the first wine is the uh, Carpe de Origine 1933 Pro Zomitage. So, in the Rhone Valley, um, again I'm generalising but I need to get this bit out of the way, there are four quality levels. There is Coco Ray, which everyone knows, um, and that can come from north or south, um, anywhere within the region. Um, you've got Coco Ray Village, so that's the next level up. So that comes from selected villages which are regarded to be better quality. Um, those are pretty much all in the south. Um, then you've got Coco Ray Village with a named village. So that's Coco Ray Village level, but from one village on its own. So the very the slightly better villages still have that. Um, that permission, if you like, to put the village name on the label. And if you're right at the top, they call that the crew, and you don't need to use the word road at all. You are your own entity. Um, and that would be, for example, there are 17 of those, but the best known of those are um, Bacuvas, Gigondas, and the Cross Chateau Neuf de Pac. But they are all in the southern road, and in the northern road, the crew there are things like Cote Roti, Cornas, Hermitage, and Crozomitage, and what we've got here is a Crozomitage. So Crozomitage is the largest of the crew in the north. Um, and this wine is 100% syrup. What you tend to find with these northern wines is they're a bit more tight. They have that sort of syrup, sort of syrup in this sort of climate gives you a sort of slightly, almost slightly meaty, sort of slightly dusty, tar and violet sort of character. 
Um, the guys who make this cloud pretend they're a cooperative, um, but these days cooperatives in France are very quality minded. It used to be a time when the cooperative was the sort of depository for the remaining grapes. So, you know, if, if you know if a, if a grape grower couldn't sell his grape, could, didn't have his own winery, um, didn't do anything of any great quality, he was guaranteed he'd sent his grapes to a cooperative, he or she, that um, they would get purchased and there would be a minimum price for them. The way cooperatives work now is very different. They are insistent on quality. And what they're saying to their growers now is, um, actually, that vineyard you've got over there, we don't want you to send us three tons of grapes. We want you to send us one and a half tons of grapes. But we want you to be better quality grapes. So we want you to cut your yield down, prune back, etc., etc. And you have to get more prizes. First, first wine. Oh, there is a couple of wines. So first wine, Northern Rose. Leaner, tighter, lo lower alcohol. Second wine, Southern Rome, hotter, warmer, more opulent, and based on Grenache. So we're not based on Syrah here. This particular wine, you know I said a minute ago about the quality of this, so you've got Cote de Rome, Cote de Rome Village, and then Cote de Rome Village from one village. That's what this is. So the village is called Segure, it's a beautiful village on a sort of rocky outcrop. Um, and this wine actually also comes from one single vineyard plot as well. So we, we don't own this plot. The company I work for, we make this wine. We don't own this plot. But we buy the grapes from this plot every single year. And we have done since 2003. Um, so the plot of the, the actual vineyard is planted to, is to, planted to mostly Grenache, sp spattered randomly amongst the Grenache vines. And this happens a lot in France. Uh, there's the odd syrup vine. So the whole lot just gets brought in together. So we think it's about 95 vines. To be honest with you, we're not absolutely sure, it doesn't really matter. Um, this one, immediately, you can tell, it's from, A, it's from a warmer area, and B, it's a different grape variety, because it's a bit more generous. And that gives you that sort of generous generosity of fruit. And also, with this, we aged this in barrel for all of it, for nearly two years prior to release. Um, some of which is new, some of which is second use, some of which is third use. So, um, as you use a barrel, the more times you use it, the less obvious oaky characters it gives you. But you can still pick out of this, particularly on the nose, there's that sort of shoeboxy, leathery sort of thing going on. Um, that, that you can tell, that's, that's partly come from the barrels that it's been aged in. It gives you that lovely sort of opulence. And then on the palate, it's broader, obviously more alcoholic, um, it's got more ripe sort of sweet fruit as well. It sort of tastes posh, really. Um, <laughs> there aren't an awful lot of wines from Segurate distributed in the UK. Um, it is one of the villages that is classified to be allowed to use its name on the bottle, as I said. Um, but the, the, you just don't see it very much. And we've luckily got this particular plot and we've sort of tied it in every single year. So we're really happy with this. Um, and it's always been huge, hugely popular for us. So, so, like I was saying about this pyramid, you know, we've got, say, Cote Road, Cote Road Village, Cote Road Village, main village, and then crew. So, in the southern row, the top crew, there's 17 of them, I won't bore you by reading them all out. Um, and I'll forget half of them anyway. But um, obviously Chateau Neuf du Pape. After Chateau Neuf du Pape, probably the second most renowned is Gigondas. Um, Gigondas is, um, is at the side of the valley, and there's a, a range of, well, a mountain, which is like a few little peaks, called Les Dontelles Don de Mont Mirage. Which, you know, they're, they're quite sort of jaggedy peaks. And within Gigondas, within the area that's demarcated, you can be on one side of that facing south, and a bit flatter, it's very hot, and the wines are massive. And they're fine, they're, they're massive, they're not that elegant. And um, this guy we get this from, the, the grapes for this one, this guy called Alphonse, he's actually um, originally Spanish. Um, and he's on the north side and he's higher up. So that's where the better grapes are located. So this is a blend of, we've got it on here, Grenache, Syrah, Mavedra. Um, I think it's 70 Grenache, 15 Syrah, 15 Mavedra. The rule in the, in the whole of the southern road is you have to be at least 50% Grenache. So all the wines are. So with Gigondas, what you get is you get that lovely ripeness like you've got in the Segure, but because it's that little bit higher up, and because it's that little bit, and because of the nature of the soil as well, um, the wines are a bit crisper, so they've got a bit more acidity, a bit more backbone to them. Um, and so they are very, very highly renowned. So this is the sort of closest you can get to Chateauneuf without spending Chateauneuf money. So it's not as maybe it's quite as opulent as the Segure, because it doesn't have that oak. 50% um, of it's been aged in barrel for about a year. So it's not had as much barrel, but it's got extremely good concentration and fruit character. And, and I, I would argue with this, 
that the different types of fruit come out, come out a bit more pronounced. So you've got that sort of berry fruit that you'd expect, mm. and then you've got like a sort of almost rhubarb thing happening, and I don't know, sort of cherries and all sorts. So this is the thing that I would pair with two, particularly, because you've got that little extra dip of acidity. So you, you match this with, predictably really, lamb, beef, hard cheeses. Red wine goes well with things with protein in because the tannins in red wine bind the proteins in the mouth. So you'll always find that that's why red wine goes with meat, cheese, and stuff like that. Um, anything, anything with protein is beans, pulses, not fish. Whatever everyone tells you, horrible. Um, 